everybody, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. Um, we're going to go ahead and pick up where we left off. We're going to keep going on some of those problems. So let's get to it. Uh, just testing out the BMS systems again. Uh, before I had one that was just a red and green flashing and the other one was green. Um, it turned out that the thermistor plug there, um, anyway, I don't know if it wasn't seated or if there's a slightly loose wire, but anyway, when I plug that in um, all the way, then it's working now. So, good news. So BMS, check. Now that we're somewhat certain, more certain, that we don't have a high voltage leak, um, and we've got our BMS systems working, I'm gonna go ahead and try and button this up. Did get uh, cooling plates for the uh, back here. So um, I'll put this on, try and tuck all the wires underneath the uh, cover there. And then uh, if that all looks good, we'll put the uh, cooling plates on and then the whole top to kind of clamp things together. Um, we'll see how far we get. All right, I've got the uh, top cover on. Um, I don't have it bolted down yet. Um, you can see just a, there a little bit, it's just got a gap. So we can go ahead and close this up. The only problem is, um, so I drilled holes so I could put bolts through and tighten them. Um, I just don't know if for whatever reason I like had it switched because the holes aren't really lining up. So I'll have to see, see what to do there. But in general, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I even uh, plugged in and tested the BMS uh, just to make sure that I didn't knock any wires or whatever when I was putting it on. So that still uh, still looks good. So yeah, we'll, we'll kind of get that uh, cinched up and then we'll start working on uh, back here. All right, I got the cooling plates in, lines run. So uh, I think uh, that's good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can put the top on. Um, this is one of the side panels. Got some ends, top. So we'll see if we can get it buttoned up and I'm sure as soon as I get buttoned up and I like it, I'll have to take it apart. But I think this is looking pretty good. Here is the back battery box, kind of all buttoned up. Got it cinched down with those four bolts, two batteries, cooling plates, cooling, BMS wires, everything. And then this is the uh, BMS box um, on top of the other battery pack. So I think, cross your fingers, but I think this is all buttoned up. So front and back battery packs all buttoned up. BMS says they're all good. So now we just need to make sure the controller works. The package came back from EV controls, so super quick. Um, so before I go ahead and put, like hook it up, um, I've got some uh, EMI tape uh, and I'll just kind of put it from the cord to the inverter all the way up to there and just make sure everything's grounded and uh, any sort of noise or high frequency or high voltage uh, interference uh, will hopefully be blocked and uh, we'll try it out. Um, I think at that point I've tested all the wires, done everything, if it's still the boot cycle I'm pretty sure it's something um, in the high voltage box like we're using a resistor that's not compatible or anyway something something in there but hopefully this will this will get it solved I took this opportunity to kind of clean this up a little bit and uh, instead of having the controller be right here um, like I said I think I'm gonna get a separate uh, dash module um, just anyway, so I'm gonna put that one probably in the middle here. So taking this time to move that over here um, while I'm adding the uh, uh, EMI tape. I have all the uh, wires from the controller back to the inverter. Um, I got them shielded. So this is the one end here. And um, so it's this, uh, shielding tape and I've got it connected my meter here and it comes all the way back to this plug here and I've just got it all all wrapped here so I don't know if you can see that like so 
and then I'll just touch it here and make sure we got continuity the whole way. Listen for the beep. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and ground this and then hopefully that'll get rid of any possible uh, interference. Okay, um, gonna try to power it up. So this is uh, back from EV controls. They uh, swapped out the board where the CAN controller or the CAN chip was uh, damaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get power to it. I don't have any high voltage yet. I just wanna make sure it can turn on. Um, I do have it connected to the um, to the Tesla, to the inverter. So hopefully it'll get uh, through that one screen. And then uh, after that, we'll hook it up to high voltage and see if we get the boot cycle. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I think I had a false alarm. Um, I had not plugged in the uh, inverter plug. Whew. So um, I'll go plug in the inverter plug and see if uh, it'll get past that screen now. That kind of gave me a little bit of a heart attack. All right, here we go. Uh, this is start number two. Well, it said the uh, init failure or whatever, but then it uh, did go past that screen. So I'm going to turn it off and on one more time. Yeah, so it says that failure and then it goes on, so I don't know. Um, next I'll try with high voltage. All right, I've got the uh, high voltage connected. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, switch it on and then I'll power the car on. I'm just gonna give it one chance, meaning if it doesn't boot up, um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and contact EV controls to see what troubleshooting they'd have me do next. I give this a 50-50 chance. Actually, I don't know. I guess I'm being pessimistic, but I kind of feel like maybe a 20% chance of working. I feel like there's still some issue, but here we go. So it seemed to get past this, but this is not showing anything. So I'll ask EV controls about that. So before it would constantly have a problem uh, kicking on or not uh, getting the contactors. So this one got past the contactors, but uh, just showing all zeros. So I'll ask them about that. All right, here it is all uh, looped. Um, I basically filled up uh, the 
filled up the power steering fluid in a column, I guess on both of them, and just moved the rack back and forth until it kind of came out both sides and got as full as I could. So, um, and apparently I can't ever leave something like this without uh, touching up with paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. All right, um, I'll, I'll test it out just to make sure uh, we're not leaking or again, that's free to turn, but I think we're ready to put it back in. All right, so uh, just testing it here to uh, make sure that it's, we don't have any leaks or anything. So you can twist it pretty, pretty freely and I don't see any leaks anywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and put it back in the car. Okay, so this is how I'm doing my rough alignment. So I got a laser level put on top of the wheel here, and uh, essentially as I screw this in or out, it kind of toes it in or out. And on this side, I just got some uh, strung across there so I can kind of get a line. And so I just pick a line on the frame and pick a line here. And so I know the distance between this caliper or the uh, rotor and the frame. It's about an inch, and so. I put the uh, laser level on the frame, draw a line, and then I can put laser here and draw a line and then measure it and I can then slowly adjust it. So I'm gonna do that for both, uh, both wheels and that should give me a rough alignment. All right, um, got my uh, rough alignment done. So again, just kind of had that dimension from the rotor to a place on the frame and got it all dialed in on a stationary object there. So it's pretty nice just to be able to dial it in. Um, I'm sure I'm still off, like way off compared to what a real place does, but that'll get me close. I just got off the phone with uh, EV West. Um, I shared some of my problems I've been having with them and they just had a couple comments for me. Um, I guess first they said that for my battery was over there and then I moved it over here. Um, the DC to DC converter really should just be going to the battery. It shouldn't be going to any of my 12 volt systems. Um, they said it just kind of acts like a big capacitor and helps even things out. So I may choose to mount that over here or just get another cable. Um, so I'll have just one cable from the DC to DC converter come over here and then the other one go back to um, power all the 12 volt systems. Um, the other thing is, so I asked about the boot cycle. They said they have seen something like that before and I said, well, what was the cause? He couldn't remember off the top of his head. Um, but it does seem like it's working now. With the init failure, he said that um, it's likely that the connector, so the connector on the um, Tesla side, they're all gold pins and the pins that they gave me to make the connector are tin pins and he said that tin to gold just for whatever reason doesn't match well or doesn't mate well. Um, so he said that they'll send me some gold pins so I gotta redo those like 
24 wires. Um, the other thing is he said with init failure sometimes um, it's based on the SD card that's got memory on there so he said maybe you want to try and take that out and turn it on and see if it talks then. So those are just a couple, uh, couple troubleshooting tips so we'll wait for the pins to come in. Might try to test it with the uh, SD card out and fingers crossed. I did ask if they thought that I had somehow ruined my inverter. He said he didn't think so. So uh, fingers crossed. All right, we got uh, a lot of those problems fixed. We got the uh, radiator back in. We got the steering column fixed and back in. Uh, brake lines tightened up. We've got a new controller that doesn't give us the boot cycle, but it will not talk to the Tesla. So um, I don't think it'll be a short solution. So we'll probably find uh, something else to work on. All right, uh, we were able to get a lot done, not able to drive things yet, so we'll get there, we'll get there. It may take some time and uh, some help from some key companies. So thank you for tuning in, see you next week.